Sam, thank you. See you in just a little bit. In tonight's Capital Connection, a quick look back on who stood out during the first Republican debate, plus a legal battle heating up over redistricting. CBS 58's Emily Fannin was politics editor J.R. Ross discuss in tonight's Capital Connection. Milwaukee really kicked off the political season on Wednesday by hosting the first Republican debate. And, you know, there were some testy exchanges, as uh, expected, in the debate. And this was really what a lot of people were watching for, is who was going to stand out? Who was going to be the number two to former President Donald Trump because he was not on the debate stage? Now, everyone talks about the winners and the losers, but primarily of what I heard on the grounds after the debate, as there was this kind of four names that stood out to a lot of people. It was Ron DeSantis, uh, Nikki Haley, uh, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. He's a 38-year-old political newcomer. He really had a lot of testy exchanges with individuals, Tim Scott, etc. But now it's really, you know, who will make or break? Have these make or break moments? Will it last? Will the energy that they give um, on the debate stage help them in polling? And there's not so much polling yet as they're going to be circling probably around. But I found one by 538 polling. And basically, they asked a pool of people before the debate and after the debate. And who really saw the biggest support grow was Nikki Haley, who had a pretty um, heated exchange with um, Ramaswamy over foreign policy and war, um, the war, uh, war aid to Ukraine. Um, and other than that, I mean, I was also looking for was, was Wisconsin be mentioned. Only Milwaukee's crime was poised in a question um, to Chris Christie, the former New Jersey governor. But really, with Trump's absence, did someone stand out to you, JR? And were these any, you know, aha moments that could really carry a candidate? Well, any momentum kind of dissipated because the whole world's turn, focus turned to Trump and turning himself over uh, in the Georgia case. So I'm watching is, is there some kind of moment for the debate that gets put into paid media that can provide some kind of bump? Because it didn't seem to be like that truly viral moment that's going to live on in social media and like really drive donations. Haley mentioned a great exchange, other kind of moments. Kind of, oh, that was kind of a, a good one for him or her. But as far as like somebody who won the debate, uh, I'm not sure whether there was a, a true winner of like the debate or a loser of the debate other than the two governors who didn't get a lot of attention. Right, and let's just move our attention to now the redistricting lawsuit because there was a quick update as Republicans have filed a motion in their effort to try to force liberal justice Jana Protosewitz off a lawsuit um, for the redistricting lawsuit because of her donations from the state Democratic Party and her comments on the campaign trail calling the maps rigged and unfair. So this is kind of just the latest development and in a sense, an effort by Republicans to try and delay this case. Yeah, so we knew that Republicans would target the, the donations and the comments. If you read the recusal motion, there's also this kind of argument that she has made a, she had a personal interest in the stake of this, these cases because she made a promise to voters in a campaign uh, in their minds to overturn the maps. And that if she doesn't vote to overturn the maps, then they're going to be, their punisher, she sees re-election in 10 years. Now, uh, one lawyer, a Democrat, told me that they were basically throwing stuff at the wall on the Republican side, and maybe they are. But ultimately, if they can find a way to get the U.S. Supreme Court's attention, maybe they'll find a way to say, okay, yes, we think we're going to lose this case with the state Supreme Court of Wisconsin, but if we can find a way to get the U.S. Supreme Court's interest, maybe that, you know, mutes that decision, maybe they'll overturn it. Another else, maybe delays it. Remember the Elections Commission back in 2022 said, look, whatever you do with these maps, with that lawsuit, we need them in place by mid-March, early April, to have to minister the election. If you get past that mark for 2024, may Republicans survive the 24 cycle with the maps we have in place and can try and see what they do ahead of the 2026 cycle with these things. And looking ahead to next week, we have the latest development in the future of the state's top election official. We're talking about Megan Wolf. She's the administrator of the State Elections Commission. On Tuesday, she has finally announced that she will not testify before a Senate committee um, uh, after Attorney General Josh Call actually uh, uh, made a comment in, in a letter to Senate Republicans basically saying that, hey, you don't have the authority to move her through this process. And this has been the longstanding debate here in the Capitol of whether or not they can do this uh, legally, maybe it will turn into a lawsuit, but the ultimate goal here by Republicans is those who don't really have faith in Megan as administrator, uh, they want to see her uh, not confirmed and rejected, which would essentially fire her. Yeah, Call's argument basically comes down to what's the definition of majority? So the commission voted 3-0 to renominate Wolf in the four-year term. There are six members. The argument is you need four majority of the commissioners, not just who's voting, to nominate somebody. Call, so there's a distinction in state law between that and, oh, by the way, lawmakers laid out a specific process to remove an administrator requires a majority of those voting. 
So you made clear here, majority voting, that means three would do it there, but here you must have four. Okay, so now what? So Wolf is not going to show up. What Republicans do, Ann Jacobs, a Democratic appointee to the commission, uh, said, look, this is going to be a circus. They're going to trot out the 2021 review of the 2020 election. She thought there'd be a lot of people who believe in conspiracy theories about the election who will testify and raise all kinds of crazy points. Then what does the Senate do? Do they just have a committee vote and say that's enough? Do they take up her nomination on the full floor and vote it down or possibly she find enough support to get through? And do we end up in court? And you have all this going on plus a half dozen lawsuits about election administration that creates chaos in Wisconsin ahead of 2024. All right. Well, that will do it for this week. Thanks so much for joining us.